want to thank you for joining me for episode number 12 of Midmo Mama. My name is Jenny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri in the United States where I am making in the Midwest. Today's episode is recorded on Tuesday, August 18th for upload on Thursday, August 20th. This program is about yarn crafts and food and whatever else I decide I want to talk about. And in today's episode, I have, let's see, I have some giveaway winners. And I have a new giveaway. And I have, um, I've made some progress on my projects. And I finished a book. And what did I make? I made some stuffed peppers and I made a pot roast. And I made a maple apple bread. So if that sounds like stuff that you're interested in, then I, I, I encourage you to stick around with me while we talk about these wonderful things. So let's get this show on the road. So now it's time to talk about giveaways. Now before I start with my own giveaway, I want to start off by saying, in case anybody was wondering, I did send out my hashtag Christmas in July Fairies giveaway prize um, to the winner. Um, it was delivered to her last Thursday. She's opening all of her packages on YouTube, and so she hasn't gotten to mine yet. Um, she's done two or three videos now, and she hasn't gotten to my package, so... But um, it's been really fun to watch her open all of her exciting prizes. She's got some really fun things and some really eclectic things and some fun stuff. And it's been, it's been a real treat to watch her. If you want to watch her open up her prizes, uh, you need to look up Mama Swift. Um, not Mama, M-A-M-A -M -A Mama. It's M-O-M-M-A. Swift. So S W I F T. So go find out find out um, what she's opening and you can watch her open up all her wonderful prizes. So congratulations once again to Trisha and I hope you continue to enjoy all those wonderful packages that you're opening. But I want to now talk about my own giveaways. So I am going to go ahead and announce my winners. Um, last episode, I um, was showing you that I wanted to give away this skinny yarn right here. Um, this is for my 100 subscribers giveaway. Now, I'm, I'm over 300, right? But during all the Christmas in July fairies giveaway, that happened my channel got big <laughs> I started out with 32 subscribers before the giveaway and I ended up with over 300 so I did my 100 subscriber giveaway and in a minute I'm going to tell you about my 200 subscribers giveaway but I am delighted um, the winner of this skinny yarn is Kim Bamford, and I am very pleased to offer this to her. Um, this is a skein of Come Hither by Nerd Girl Yarns in the Cutaway Hawaiian shirt. Uh, this yarn is 100 grams, 435 yards, fingering weight, 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And her response to the question, the question was, what is your favorite thing to knit or crochet? And she said, my favorite thing to crochet is granny squares, as you can do so much with them. Isn't that great? So, Kim, I hope you enjoy this skein of yarn. There's so many wonderful things you can make with these. You can, you can make socks because it's got nylon in them. But you can also make a cowl. You can make um, um, a little charlotte, you know, something small to go over your shoulders. Or you can make a pair of mitts, you know, 
fingers or with with or without fingers. But there's there's so many options that you can do with this. So Kim, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. And then I had a second giveaway during my Mama Re Reads segment last episode for this book. It's called Your Hospitality Personality by Morgan Tyree. And so um, all that was required was that in your comment that you put the phrase books are a blast. And this copy goes out to um, Be Wowed by April Lee. So April, you have won her response to the question. She, she said, I love reading books. Books are a blast. And she said, one of my favorite things to crochet is amigurumi. So she likes to crochet amigurumi. I'm horrible at amigurumi. I'm, I'm, I'm always a fan. I'm always cheering on the people who do the amigurumi. But I have never made anything that was... You know, Everything's beautiful. Well, I did make an avocado and it turned out really cute. I made an avocado and I made a peach for my daughter. And it didn't turn out too good. It was kind of, kind of, it was kind of pathetic, I think. But, um, April, you'll be getting this book. So, Congratulations to Kim for the yarn, and congratulations to April for the book. I'm very happy for you both. I will get these things out to you by the end of the week. And I want to thank everyone who participated in the giveaway. So, at this time, I would like to announce my 200 subscriber giveaway. Yay! <laughs> my 200 subscribers well I am going to give away another nerd girl yarn and I have to say I I have a lot of nerd girl yarn you know why because when I first started buying yarn um, she lives um, in the city oh maybe about 45 miles west of me, near Kansas City, a little town called Odessa. And she was, she's an independent yarn dyer. Well, she had to give up her business. Um, but she was a, a, a wonderful yarn dyer for many, many years. And she taught me, you know, fancy yarn versus you know, regular, ordinary yarn. You know, she introduced me to the world of the independent yarn dyers and, and that kind of thing. And so I have an awful lot, because for, for the longest time, I, I bought from her pretty much exclusively. And, uh, and so I have a lot in my stash, and you know how we are with our stashes. We buy a bunch of yarn and, you know, We'll never get around to using it in our entire lifetime. And so, I'll, what, just like I did with the Hawaiian shirt, I had two of them. Well, I don't need two. You know, because chances are I'm going to make socks out of them. So, you really only need one scheme to make socks. Well, same goes for this one. So, this one, I can't, I can't wait to say it because it's so pretty. Mm. So, here we have... A beautiful sparkle skein of Nerd Girl Yarns. The base is called Astral. Astral. It is, the colorway is called I Am the Cyber King. This yarn is 100 grams. It's 435 yards. It's a fingering two ply. It's 75% superwash merino, 
20% nylon, and 5% gold toned stellina. And it's gorgeous. It's got a bright, a bright true red, and it goes into a deeper, um, more rich red, and then you end up with a segment of black. And it's so pretty. And it's so beautiful. And I had two skeins, and you know, chances are I'll probably, I'll probably make socks out of them. So I'm going to give one of these away. So, how do you enter? Well, did you know, and I didn't know this, I was watching somebody else's giveaway. And so, they said that it's against, it is against YouTube's terms of agreement to require people to subscribe to my channel in order to win a giveaway. I did not know this, and I felt very, very horrible encouraging people to subscribe to my giveaway. I figured if I wasn't, you know, because you know, you do the no purchase necessary, well, I wasn't expecting anybody to buy anything. I don't have anything to sell. So I figured, well, no purchase necessary. But I guess, I guess um, requesting that people subscribe to my channel in order to win, that's, it's interfering with YouTube's algorithms or something. I don't understand that stuff, but I guess it's against the rules, and I could lose my channel if if someone was to really complain about the fact that I was requiring people to subscribe to my channel. So I don't want to get in trouble, and you know I think doing this little podcast things is kind of fun so hopefully nobody will tattletale on me too harsh but I'm not going to make you subscribe to my channel so you can win but you do have to you have to put a comment in and you have to answer the question because <laughs> if you don't answer the question you have to you know you have to have a, a question answer but you don't have to subscribe Although I wish you would, you're encouraged to subscribe so that you don't miss my program and so that you can find me easily next time you want to watch my show. But it's okay, I won't make you subscribe. Because I don't want to break the rules. Okay, so all you have to do is answer the following question in the comments of episode 12. That's the episode that you're watching right now. This is episode 12. So, September is coming, which is the month that ushers in the fall season. Is there an item that you like to cast on or chain on every year on September 1st? If so, what do you like to make to celebrate fall? So what do you like to make to celebrate fall? So I'll put it in, I'll put that question in my show notes in case you forget what the question is. It's in the little description box so you've got that little carrot that goes up like that. You just click on that carrot and it'll drop down the description box and it'll show you the, the um, question. But let me repeat it one time in case you don't want to look it up. You can listen to me if you want to. So, September is coming, which is the month that ushers in the fall season. Is there an item you like to cast on or chain on every year on September 1st? If so, what do you like to make to celebrate fall? Now, you know, and if you're not someone, if you don't, cast on a new project on September 1st, you're, you're still eligible to win. You can just say, well, I don't I do not do it that way. I just work on whatever I feel like working on. Or you can say, yeah, I, I usually start a hat on September 1st to, to get ready for fall. Or I make a cowl. I start on a cowl on September 1st to get ready. Or, or socks. Or a scarf. Or, or, or if, like I said, if, if there's, you know, if September 1st isn't 
a good, you know, a starting line for you and to say, no, I don't make anything special on, you know, starting on September 1st. It's not what I do. So, you know, as long as you have an answer, I don't care what the answer is. I'm interested in the answer. <laughs> I don't want I don't want you to think I don't care about you. <laughs> of course I care about you. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you don't have to answer the question in a, any particular way in order for you to qualify for an entry, okay? <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to keep the rules at a minimum, okay? But I want to to, to in, I want to encourage you to engage in an answer to the question, that's all. So what are the rules? Okay, the rules. No purchase necessary. You must be 18 years old. You must answer the question in the comments of episode 12 of Ms. Mo Mama. That's this one right here. Okay? One entry per person. It's open worldwide. Except it's void where prohibited. <laughs> Am I being too silly? I'm sorry. Okay, let's see. Entry period will close at noon Central Daylight Savings Time on Tuesday, September 1st. And the winner will be announced in episode 13 of Mid Moon Mama. That's the one you're watching, Mid Moon Mama. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. This giveaway is not affiliated with YouTube in any way. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Crafts. And I'm still working on the same two projects I've been working on for two months. Probably longer than that. These these have been on these have been on the needle since February, February 10th, because it's put a knit along with my knit group, and I'm the only one that's still working on them. <laughs> so needless to say, our group is not really sock knitters. That's not to say that they're not going to finish their socks, it's just that's not their top A number one priority right now. But I have been working on them. And they're, they're even longer now. They're even longer now. They're, I'd say that's probably about good four inches, I would say. Maybe five. But I think I'm, I'm, thinking I'm to the point now where I can start separating for the heel. So, wish me luck on that. I'm enjoying them. They're nice for conversation, but I have some flaws in my work. Just some... I don't know what they are. Just funky looking stitches that don't lay quite right, but that's okay. I, from, from my first pair of socks, it's good. But I, I don't know that I like doing them two at a time. I will try the one at a time magic glue next time, just to see if I prefer that. But <clears throat> and I might go back to the DPNs if I don't like. You know, I guess I guess you just have to work it out. And you know, I want to be a sock knitter because I think these sock patterns that I see all around are adorable. So I definitely want to make socks. It's just I haven't found a technique that I like very much. So maybe I won't be a sock knitter. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I I do what I want, right? If I'm if I got a hankering for a sock, I'm gonna make a sock. And if I don't feel like making a sock, well then I'll find something else to make. Ain't that right? So the other thing that I work on, and I'm almost done, is my Novello shawl. Novello. Oh, I didn't tell you what those socks were. Those socks are the two at once toe up magic loop socks by Knit Picks Design Team. And the yarn I'm using is Yarn Bee Walkaway in the colorway Waltz. 
I have it memorized. Oh, and the bag is my Blind Mice Cheese Bag by Art by Anna. Or Art by Anna. So I have, I have that memorized. This one is my Outer Space Girl by Fat Girl Sewing. And the pattern is called Novello by Emily Walton. She's she's the designer for um, Expression Fiber Arts. But here we have, oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. Here we have Novello. I'm going to fill up the screen as much as I can so you can do a good look at it. And you have to forgive me, it's it's curling under at the end. This this is this is the correct side, but now it's upside down so you can see the end of it. But it's beautiful. Um, you know. I'm hoping that this will block out. That would be my preference. <laughs> So that it won't curl inside of itself like that. We'll see how it ends up, right? A little bit of a little bit of a good soak in some water and a nice good stretch and it should it should lay out flat. At least for a few months, right? I love this. I love working on it. I don't know. I know it's going to look well on. But it's pretty. It's pretty and I like the way it feels on my shoulders. What's the yarn I'm using? I am using um, Parlay uh, by Nerd Girl Yarns. It is a I think this is the worsted white parlay. Yeah, parlay is worsted weight. It's a 60% merino, 40% bamboo. And I've used one yarn. Uh, I'll show you where I'm at with my yarn. Um, I'm not using any more of this. This is the how to polish rust. And this is all I have left of it. And I don't have any spare. I might have one. I, I think I have another full skein of this. And this I had a total of three skeins. And I have this much left of the first skein. So I might, I might need to tap into a second skein. This colorway is called Heritage. I might need to tap into the one but I do not know I'm making I'm making no promises but I'm really loving this I have um, I, I have to do the final stocking next section two more times so well one or two well one or two. So I do four more rows there, and then the border row. Which has worked rows one and two a total of three times. So four, six. So I have about ten rows, and then I'm done. But one row now now takes me about an about 45 minutes to an hour. No, yeah. Uh, I think it takes me about a half an hour per row now. Because I have 279 stitches on the needles right now. So. I'm really loving this though. I, I'm, I, this, you know, 
This is definitely fall colors and I'll, I'll have something fun to wear for the fall. So I'm excited. I hope I hope I I hope I have just the right outfit to wear it with. If not, I'll just wear it with jeans and a t-shirt. You can wear a shawl with whatever you want to. You don't have to wear a dress. You don't have to wear something fancy. Because if we waited till we had a fancy occasion, we would never wear the fun stuff that we knit, would we? Or crochet. And, oh, and that makes me feel bad because I only have knitted projects going on. And I was going to try to get rolling on a crochet project that I have in hibernation, but I didn't get around to it. So... Maybe if I finish these 10 rows, I'll be able to get around to it. So that's it. That's all I have. I have two works in progress, and I haven't worked on anything else. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama's Pattern Showcase. This is the part of the show where I feature five new patterns that I have discovered in my pattern highlights. Uh, I pull these from Ravelry. If you don't use Ravelry and I can, if I can see here that it's available elsewhere, I'll tell you where you can find it, okay? But you have to listen up. I, I, um, I don't... I don't put alternate links in my show notes um, just because I don't have time to do all of that. But um, you know, if I can, if I can help you with a, with another source to find it, then then I'll do my best. Um, they're in no particular order, but I wanted to tell you about <laughs> that. There's an amigurumi out there. So my friend, um, April, who won the book, she might be interested in this one. It's adorable. It's Kelly's Cow Buddy by Heidi Yates. <laughs> and it's a crochet cow that will hold your glasses and your remote. And your scissors and your crochet hooks. It's like a little, it's like a little notions caddy type of thing. Um, using um, Red Heart Super Saver. So Aaron White Yarn, any color. Hook size H, 5 millimeter. In U.S. crochet terminology, it's available in English. And it's $4 for the pattern. This is so adorable. It says, in 2019, I decided I designed a bird to hold my glasses and TV remote. Since then, I have wanted to design a cow version for my sister Kelly, since we both love real cows. I am excited to be able to send this to her for her birthday. I hope this cow buddy will be useful at your house too, with or without glasses. She could be used to hold crochet supplies, colored pencils, or other little gadgets. She would make a cute doorstop, too. So it gives you information on materials and details. Uh, you, you can get help from her via email. Um, follow Snappy Tots. On your favorite social media sites for giveaways, news, release, announcements, events, and fun. So she's got a link to Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. So yeah. Send her an email. I don't see anywhere on here where she specifically says you can buy this stuff anywhere else. But try Snappy Tots. Snappy Tots. S-N-A-P-P-Y-T-O-T-S. On social media. And see if she has patterns available elsewhere, okay? But the, this cow is a dwarf. He's got purple, purple hair and he's got 
cute little ears. And he's got little pouches and uh, his arms. You know, you can slide stuff in his arms to hold things. And it's just, it's cute. Cute as can be. So that's why I featured it in my, um, in my highlights. So, yep, check out Kelly's Cow Buddy by Heidi Yates. The next pattern I would like to showcase is called, this pattern is available as a blanket or a cardigan sweater. Okay? But I'm featuring the blanket because I think the blanket is probably more versatile for most people. But just look up Kurdak. I think it's Kurdak. But it's C-U-R-D-A-C-H. Blanket. Or you can say Kurdach. Cardigan. But it's designed by Carol Feller. Um... <clears throat> Um, it's knitted. It's a knitted blanket throw, or if you look for the cardigan, I guess that would be a cardigan. Um, using DK weight yarn, a US 6 needles, which are 4 millimeters. You're going to need about 2180 yards of yarn for this. Um, it is, it'll come out to be about 40 inches by 50 inches. So a little bit, you know, kind of a square rectangle. And it's available in English. Here we go. This is the fourth pattern from Celtic Knit Club 2020. Okay, it's exclusive to the club until October 2020. New club opening in November for 2021 club. Oh, it's a club thing. It'll be open to the public come October though. So if you see that you like these designs and you think you might want to pay a uh, Try these patterns out, but you're not a member of the club, you have to wait till October. And I guess then at that point they'll be open to the public. So there's no price on it. And I would I would suspect you have to buy it in as part of the collection. And the but this but it's beautiful, it's cables. It says, Do you love cables but never wear cardigans? And this blanket is just for you. This generously sized throw will keep you cozy on winter evenings and you'll have fun learning the cables while also keeping yourself warm. So, very interesting. Um, the cable patterning is gorgeous, absolutely stunning. And um, so if, you're, if you like doing cables and you like knitting, but you don't prefer, if you don't like making garments, you prefer blankets, then... Give this one a shot. It is very good. I have no idea how much it's going to cost. Like I said, it's part of a club. I would imagine she would piecemeal them out. Maybe, maybe she would offer a deal if you bought them all together, and then you know, pay pay more if you buy them individually. That's what I would think. I don't know, but. There you go, Carol Feller, curl that blanket. Uh, the next pattern I would like to sh showcase to you is actually is actually a milestone in the loom knitting world. Um, here we have uh, Kristen Mangus has designed. The very first easy-going pullover sweater for loom knitters. For loom knitters. Now, I started loom knitting in 2014. And, I mean, there has been talk for years on how, how to make garments 
you know, adult sized sweaters using knitting looms. And the loom designers have become so innovative with the, the way you can configure your looms, they're adjustable now. And now you can actually make things like sweaters. And so here we have the very first easygoing pullover sweater by Kristen Mangus from Good Knit Kisses. Um, she does have an Etsy store and a Ravelry store. So Good Knit Kisses. Okay. Um, it's a loom knitted sweater using bulky weight yarn. <clears throat> it's available in one, two, three, four, five, six sizes uh, from extra small to small. You got medium large, extra large, um, two, three extra large, and four or five extra large. Available in English. Y'all, this pattern is a dollar ninety ninety nine. For one dollar and ninety nine cents, you can get a sweater pattern. Okay. Uh, you can visit her website. Or uh, you can buy it on Etsy. I said, it's that sweater. The comfy oversized weekender that you love to wear. It's also the one that you can loom knit. Based on the easygoing pullover needle knit pattern from Your Inspirations, this loom knit pattern is easier than it looks. Uh, once you learn the basic stitch pattern, you'll be on your way to loom knitting your first sweater. Pattern includes from extra small to five extra large. Very awesome. Very awesome. Good for her. I'm glad somebody came up with a, with a sweater you can do on a loom. And it is. It's a very nice, it's a very bulky looking um, sweater. It, it has a cowl, it's a cowl neck sweater and it's, it's nice. It's a nice sweater. So if you're a loom knitter and you've been discouraged because you haven't been able to make a sweater, well now we have a way to make a sweater. So awesome, awesome, awesome. <clears throat> The next pattern I would like to showcase is called the Honey Pie Cow by Kelly McClure from Boho Knits. Um, it's a knitted cowl. It's, the pattern is six dollars. Um, suggested use fingering weight. You're going to use a US one and a half and a US two knitting needles. Um, it makes a one size cowl and it's available in English. This pattern, oh, well, that's a shame. The pattern was free until Sunday, August 16th. Today is the 18th and this, you know, you'll get to see this on the 20th. But if you missed the promotion, you can find honey pie hives and herbals at a market to get your 50% off coupon. I don't know what that means. This detailed cowl is the fifth design in a collaboration series with Ontario Indie Dyers. It features honey pie hives and herbals who naturally dyes yarns in Prince Edward County using plants from her property. Photos were taken on site with the stunning dyer as the model. This design is strictly for stranded knitting lovers. It is made in one long tube, starting with a provisional cast on, and then the ends are grafted together for a seamless object of beauty that is also crazy cozy. Two solid contrasting colors are suggested for the best result. Note that all yarn is used. If you are making a substitution, don't skimp on yardage. Experience with stranded knitting is suggested. Two-handed stranding is also recommended. See resource links below. So check her out. That's a that's a very nice. It's it's a reversible cowl, so you can have the bee on the outside, the honey bee, or you can flip it inside out and you can have like this honeycomb clover look. 
looking design, two-tone. So it's very pretty. I like it. It caught my eye. I don't know. I don't like I don't like flying insects, so I probably wouldn't make that for myself. But well, if I did, I would wear it with the clover pattern on the outside. I don't know if it's a clover pattern. Well, be bees so cool on clover blooms, don't they? Those little clover blossom things. So maybe it is uh, clover. But at any rate, it's a very nice cow, and I suggest that you take a look at it if you're interested in casting on a cow for fall. And then finally, I like to showcase a pattern called Victoria by Justina Lorokowska. Um, it's a um, short sleeve pullover. Um, top um, using fingering weight knitted knitting needles US 4 and US 3 lots of sizes available 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sizes from 2 extra small all the way up to 6 extra large so there's plenty of size ranges to knit with this and there's a it's a stitch pattern on the body of it that you have to really look close but it's got bobbles on it too and I think it's pretty it looks like it's like knitted kind of in a boxy style and it looks like it might have not a portrait color is it more like a boat neck? Maybe it's a boat neck. But it's nice. I like it. The pictures aren't great. But it's enough to get a decent impression of the of the design. And I think it's pretty. But it's seven dollars US. However, if you purchase five of my self-published designs at the same time, they need to be in the same cart, you will get the least expensive one for free. This top is super special to me. I made it to celebrate old and true friendships of people who support you throughout hard times. The name Victoria is after fabulous Vicky from Eden College Cottage Yarns who hand-dyed this gorgeous yarn. I made my sample in BFL but you can substitute it with any fingering weight with nice stitch definition and not too much stretch. Hope you like it as much as me. Happy knitting, she says. So that's a lovely pullover top. I think that's nice. So give that a look at. Seven dollars US. But that concludes my uh, Mama's Pattern Showcase, so let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Bakes. And last Wednesday, it was my turn to bring uh, one of the snacks for the women's group that I'm with. It was our last time session together, and so it was me and um, one, of, one of the other gals. It was our turn to bring snacks. And so I decided to go with a, a, a recipe out of this book. It's called The Best of Country Cooking. My mom has about five of these. Five of these. This is from 2000. And so I used the recipe out of this book. It's called um, Maple Apple Bread. And it was, it was, it was easy. It was easy and it was delicious. And it used um, crescent roll dough. 
Except instead of buying the crescent rolls, I bought the one that, that's just in a plain sheet with no perforations. And it worked out just fine. Um, um, I think I think it was I think the recipe was made before they came out with the crescent roll dough that comes in an unperforated sheet. So you could use either or. If you buy the perforated crescent roll dough, then of course you push the perforations together so that you know so that it sticks. But it was a really good apple bread. And it had maple flavor in it. So I'm going to show you how I made maple apple bread. And we'll be right back. For maple apple bread, you want 1 quarter cup packed brown sugar, 2 tablespoons all-purpose flour, 1 teaspoon ground cinnamon, 1 egg beaten, 1 teaspoon maple flavoring, half cup chopped peeled tart apple, quarter cup chopped walnuts, two packages, eight ounces each, refrigerated crescent rolls. In a bowl, combine brown sugar, flour, cinnamon, egg, and maple flavoring. Mix well. Add apple and nuts, stir to coat. Unroll crescent roll dough and separate into eight rectangles. Seal the seams and perforations. Spread each rectangle with the apple mixture. Roll up, starting with a short side, and place lengthwise in a greased 8 inch by 4 inch by 2 inch loaf pan, making two layers of four rolls. Bake at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Cover with foil and bake 30 minutes longer or until golden brown uncovering for the last five minutes. Cool for 10 minutes. Remove from pan to a wire rack to cool completely. Then you want your glaze ingredients. A half cup confectioner sugar, one tablespoon milk, half teaspoon vanilla extract. Combine the glaze ingredients and drizzle over the bread. And that's how you make maple apple bread. And now it's time for Mama Cooks. And you know what Mama's been cooking? I cooked two things this time that was new to me. And I used the same cookbook as I used for Mama Bakes. I used um, The Best of Country Cooking to, uh, 2000. That's the year, the year 2000. And I made, uh, my husband, he went down to Springfield for um, a martial arts um, competition. He wasn't competing. He was just went down to to be a, a, an observer, a spectator, a spectator. So I decided I was going to make something yucky, something that my daughter and I would enjoy, but my husband probably wouldn't get a kick out of. So I made chicken stuffed peppers, and it was delicious, except. Audrey was disappointed because it wasn't. She she had a hankering for something cheesy and creamy, something something like heavy and rich and decadent. But this wasn't like that. She said, "Mama, it's too healthy." <laughs> but I thought it tasted delicious, and she did agree. The filling is chicken. Chicken, instead of the ground beef and rice that you typically hear about, we use chicken and rice and various vegetables. And it was actually really good. I think that the chicken um, filling would have been good on its own without stuffing the, into the peppers. You could, you could even, you know, julienne or chop up the peppers and put it in the whole thing and mix it all together and it would... It would be delicious. It was it was a lot like chicken soup, but it was not as it wasn't soupy. It was, I guess it was kind of stewy, kind of like stew. But whatever it was, it was it was juicy, and there was 
uh, lots of vegetables in it, and I thought it was I thought it was worth sharing. So, um, so let me show you how I made the um, chicken stuffed green peppers. For chicken stuffed green peppers, you want four large green peppers, one third cup chopped onion, one garlic clove minced, two tablespoons butter or margarine, three cups diced cooked chicken, two cups chicken broth, one package six ounces long grain brown and wild rice blend, one third cup sliced celery, one quarter cup finely chopped carrot, one quarter teaspoon dried basil, one quarter teaspoon dried thyme, one can 14 and a half ounces diced tomatoes undrained, one cup chopped fresh mushrooms, half cup chopped zucchini, quarter cup grated Parmesan cheese. Cut tops off peppers, remove seeds. In a large kettle, cook peppers in boiling water for three minutes. Drain and rinse in cold water, set aside. In a large saucepan, saute onion and garlic in butter until tender. Add chicken, broth, rice with contents of seasoning packet, celery, carrot, basil, and thyme. Bring to a boil, reduce heat, cover and simmer for 25 minutes or until the rice is almost tender. Remove from the heat, stir in tomatoes, mushrooms, and zucchini. Spoon rice mixture into the peppers and place in a greased two-quart baking dish. Spoon the remaining rice mixture around the peppers. Cover and bake at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until the peppers are tender and filling is heated through. Uncover and sprinkle with Parmesan cheese. Bake an additional five minutes longer. And that is how you make chicken stuffed green peppers. The second thing that I cooked was an old fashioned pot roast. Um, I'm not usually particular about my pot roast. Most of the time I use the McCormick seasoning packet and I just follow the directions on the packet on the back of the envelope. You know, I'm not real, you know, I like I like pot roast, but I'm not really particular. You know, I don't have a, a favorite recipe. So I was I was browsing through the same cookbook. You know, I've gotten everything out of here so far. Um and just used the first main dish recipe that they had and it was old fashioned pot roast and it was good it used um the Heinz chili sauce not the hot sauce but uh you know it's like cocktail sauce only it's like not really cocktail sauce they call it chili sauce so it uses a, a whole bottle of that and some water and a onion soup mix and it turned out good it was it was good it was it was tomatoey but it wasn't spicy and it used um you know meat and potatoes and carrots and celery so and it was good it was just a basic pot roast it wasn't it, you know it wasn't spectacular it wasn't fancy um, you know, and the seasoning envelopes are just as good, but, I mean, this was a different way to make it, and it tasted a little bit different, and it was good, um, so this is how I made old-fashioned pot roast. For old-fashioned pot roast, you need one eye of round roast, three to four pounds, and you want to place that in an ungreased roasting pan. Then, you want to take one bottle, 12 ounces, chili sauce, one cup water, and one envelope onion soup mix. Combine those three together in a bowl, mix them around real good, and then pour that over the roast. Cover the roast and bake it at 350 degrees 
for two hours. Then you want four medium potatoes cut into one inch pieces, five medium carrots cut into one inch pieces, two celery ribs cut into one inch pieces. After the two hours expire, you want to pull the roast out of the oven and cut into one inch or half inch slices and return them to the pan. Then you want to top with potatoes, carrots, and celery. And then you want to cover it again and bake it for an additional hour or until the vegetables are tender. And that's how you make old fashioned pot roast. And now it's time for Mama Rigi's. And I finished the book. I finished the book, Your Hospitality Personality. How to Confidently Create Connection and Community by Morgan Tyree. Um, I uh, I read the book on my Kindle, so I didn't I didn't want to, you know, since I was already reading it on my Kindle, I didn't want to break the binding or anything and start reading it on here. But um, this was a, a really good book. I highly recommend it. Um, so um, check that out. Um, you can find it on Goodreads. And there you'll find links to wherever else you can buy it. You can buy it off of Amazon. You can buy it off of, um, you know, various different websites and stuff. So give uh, give that a try. I the thing I liked about it was um, no matter what stage of life you're in, you can find ways to be um, hospitable. Um, whether you're single, or if you're an empty nester, or if you're in any other status in between, it helps you, um, you know, it, it you, you also, um, you know, she doesn't ignore things like, you know, people's financial, um, limitations and, and stuff like that. Anybody, anybody can create connections with other people um, and um, you know based on your personality you're better at some types of hospitality than other types of hospitality and so those are the ones that you're gonna you know be more inclined to practice out but reaching out to people is very important and I felt like this book was very helpful and encouraging as far as um, getting together with people. Now people are social distancing now but we're not going to be social distancing forever. It's not going to be forever. There, I mean I would imagine that as soon as everybody's reaches you know a, a, a much better you know um, you know, when things start improving out there, you know, people are going to start to have parties again and get-togethers and, and whatnot. So, get ready. Get ready. Read a book about hospitality and plan for your next party, even if you don't have a date set yet. <coughs> Just say, look, you know, as soon as we get to all clear, I'm going to plan a party. And use some of these tips in here to help you plan your party. That's all I gotta say. We're not gonna be sequestered forever. We can all we can get together with people very soon. If we are already, some folks are getting together soon. They're not letting anything stop them. So I don't want to be advocating for that. Just you know, everybody use their good common sense. And be clean. Wash your hands every day, all the time, all day long. Every time you use the bathroom, wash your hands. Every time you're in the kitchen, wash your hands. Even if you don't think your hands are dirty, wash your hands. <laughs> it's not that hard, folks. 
almost, I'm almost done with a woman who doesn't quit. Five Habits from the Book of Ruth by Nikki Kosiars. Um, as far as us meeting and getting together, uh, we had our last session last Wednesday. Um, but I have a few more days to work on because they, on your last get together, you still have one more week of of study to go before you're finally finished. So I have a couple more days to go um, to, before I'm finished with this. And I recommend it. I thought it was a good study. I uh, learned a lot and, and my, my Bible study group grew. You know, I feel like we grew as friends and we grew, um, you know, to being, uh, to, to not give up, you know, you don't quit, don't back down, just follow through and get the stuff done. And then, I resumed reading Murder, She Knit by Peggy Earhart. It's the first book in the series, A Knit and Nibble Mystery. So, I'm reading it. It's, it's just, it's light. It's light, a uh, cozy mystery, you know, nothing, nothing earth shattering, it's not too deep, and it's okay. I mean, I just finished chapter 7, so I'll be reading chapter 8 tonight, but it's pretty good. It's got a knitting pattern in the back. The Frugal Knitter's Scarf, Bohemian Sheep. That's cool. Oh, and she gives you a couple of recipes. Autumn apple cake. One recipe. Autumn apple cake is at the super duper back. Very cool. So, that's a good book. I'm enjoying that. But that's it. That's all I'm reading. I've got the murder she knit. I haven't been listening to anything on audio. I'm still listening to podcasts. I get tired of audio books sometimes, so I listen to podcasts until I get sick of those. And then I go back to listening to audiobooks again. So. so that's it. Let's move on to the next segment. Would you believe it? I didn't watch one single movie in the past couple of weeks. Not one. I've been watching TV shows. No movies. Not really much has gone on these past couple weeks. I've been busy, but, you know, not with anything worth talking about. Um, my son Cameron celebrated his 23rd birthday yesterday, so I'm very proud of him for making it to 23. <laughs> and he's my middle boy. I love him to pieces. He wants an Amazon gift card. I reached out to him a couple of days ago and asked him, you know, what he wanted, and he said, oh, I'll add just a gift card. And I'm like, well, where? But he didn't answer me. So finally he got back to me yesterday and he said, oh, Amazon's okay. Okay, I'll send you a gift card for Amazon. So that's what I'll do. And I'll do that. Should have done that today. I've been, I've been busy today. I've been running errands and stuff, so I'll send him his gift card as soon as I get done here. Um, let's see. In my town, we have the COVID-19 version of the Missouri State Fair going on right now. It's, it's not. I tell you what, the, the Missouri State Fair is a big deal in this town. We, you know, this has been the site for the Missouri State Fair since I don't know how long. I have to look back in the history to find out how far it goes. But... They're only holding it for the farmers, you know, the, the ranchers, the people who have animals to show. Um, they didn't do the rides, they didn't book any concerts or anything, but from what I understand, they have some food booths and stuff down there. So, Scott and I are thinking, well, maybe we'll go check it out Friday night. Go see if there's any anything foodie to be had, fair food. 
there's been a couple of food trucks that come every year to the outside of outside the fairgrounds, but close to the fairgrounds, and um, so I guess you know there's been there, there's been some food trucks around town that don't typically um, set up shop, but they're selling things like funnel cakes and corn dogs and you know fair food but it's not really it's not really the fair like it should be but the farmers and the crops and all those people are are doing their thing so so that's good I'm happy that they're doing something for the farmers because this is this is something that they plan for all year for all year and it's very important farmers and ranchers and stuff to come out and show their animals and things. Um, so my next full episode will be September 3rd. Hopefully I'll be done with one of my projects and I'll be able to show you a finished item. That would be good. Or maybe I'll work on something else so that, you know, so I can have something new in my show. I don't know. But don't forget to enter the giveaway uh, for that skin of Astral, the Sparkle I Am the Cyber King yarn, red and black. Who doesn't love red and black? Red and black are sensational. So, so let's move on to the next segment. For Mama Wraps Things Up. I want to thank you for spending your time with me today. I know that watching my show is a choice and I am grateful that you have decided to share your valuable time with me. If you enjoyed what you saw today, I encourage you to click the subscribe button. All that does is make it more easy for you to find me next time. Um, episodes are posted on the first and third Thursday of every month. Clicking the notification bell will send you a notice whenever I upload an episode. If you want to ask me any questions, you can comment below or you can contact me via email at midmomama2 at gmail.com. I can be found on Instagram at midmomama1. <laughs> On Ravelry, I'm Midmo Mama, and on Stitch Zone, I am also Midmo Mama. So until next time, may God bless you. Bye.